So I took a trip out to Copenhagen in Denmark for a short four day break with my mate Dave. Honestly, I had a fantastic time, so I thought I'd share with you some of the poorly composed photos and videos. We started looking for a holiday a few months back, but we left it so late we ended up having to go for something in the EU. Copenhagen seemed like a great choice, and we found this really funky but pricey hotel called SP34. It had really fantastic rooms that looked really hygge, which uh, means to relax, sort of, and really nice views out over part of the city that we were in. Really interesting artwork downstairs and a really nice vibe. We got right onto some liquid fortification and a really great feature of the hotel was something called the free wine hour. Uh, it was from four till five or five till six and it meant that everyone could get in on the action. Perhaps it was more suited to uh, a slightly older crowd than us. We immediately set about exploring the city. There's a lot of beautiful architecture to be seen and a lot of history. Uh, that's if you're that way inclined. Despite the fantastic metro system, we did an extraordinary amount of walking. Just having a look at the sights and soaking up a bit of the atmosphere. Off out on our first excursion, and I think David started to tire of my documenting the trip. We grabbed the train and we headed out to visit the Louisiana Modern Art Museum, passing some brilliant countryside along the way, although a lot of these look like blurry trees. It really was quite beautiful. We were skirting along the coast, which was on the other side of the train, admittedly, so you don't get to see an awful lot of that. The Louisiana offered uh, both a really thought-provoking and very pl visually pleasing collection of exhibits from a wide range of artists, but also the museum is set amongst some really stark and beautiful scenery. It really was a very interesting place just to walk around for a few hours. Uh, some of the exhibits I didn't get on any kind of level, but many of them I just found it just a really nice space to be in. And some of them were funny. But I think the real beauty of this place is its surroundings. So it's right on the coast and you can see plane across to, I'm guessing that's Sweden over there. Next off, we headed back into town to go and see the Round Tower. Now, this is uh, an equine accessible tower. It was built with a spiral gradient, so the king could ride his horse to the very top. It's actually quite a workout getting up there. It's a surprisingly difficult gradient to go up. It's on the side of a church, and it, uh, it, it's a very, very tall building with a hollow core going right down to the bottom. At the top, there's an observatory, um, so that there's a, there's a telescope up the top, but it also offers amazing panoramic views of the city. And you can see the sheer scale of Copenhagen. It's really, really large, and it has just incredible colours to the roofs and to all of the different landmarks that you have.
One of the things that really strikes me about Copenhagen is all the different kinds of styles of architecture there are around. And the different colors really help pinpoint where all these different um, styles of building are. Next stop was the Dem Blau Planet, or the Blue Planet, which is Copenhagen's aquarium, uh, even if it doesn't really have a big sign outside to say it is. I cannot stress this enough. This is one of the best aquariums I've ever been to. It has a vast array of species, and all of the descriptions are written in Danish, Swedish, and English. There are just some awesome creatures that I've never seen before. These are, I think, herring sw swimming around and around, and then you've got a weird spaghettified seahorse, potentially. I honestly don't know what they all are anymore, but it was fantastic. I think when it comes to things like this, I really am a big kid at heart. Now, there are a lot of school kids there, so you know, they were having the time of their life, but I was running around looking in all the different tanks as well. It was just, it was truly fantastic. The only place that I've ever been to aquarium was called uh, the Hunstanton Sea Life Centre in the UK. And that one pales in comparison to this. The, the tanks, the scale of them is just huge. You've got this massive pane of glass in one section that's four or five times my height. Um, and it's, I don't even, can't even imagine how many gallons of water it's holding back, but you've got hammerhead sharks in there, stingrays, puffer fish, uh, sailfish, all sorts, uh, all swimming around there. It's, it's seemingly at peace with one another. It also had an outside section where they had um, piranha in these Amazon river scenarios and it had uh, a crocodile, it had some poison tree frogs. And then we grabbed the robot train back to the city, heading for the Carlsberg Museum. Now the Carlsberg Museum was something that was on the list, mainly because I like beer, but also because I've never been to a beer museum or a, a brewery museum. Now they've got something like 16,000 bottles of beer, unopened bottles of beer, I think, and a big history of how Carlsberg was made uh, how it became what it is today and how many brands they have. Now, in the ticket price, you get a tour of the, let's call it a facility, and it also has uh, some of the machinery they would really used at the time to measure how to create the beer, whether it was at the right maturity, that kind of thing. But you also get a couple of beers at the end, which I was thoroughly looking forward to. Now, we decided to go on a self-guided tour, which meant that we walked around our, on our own with pretty much very little concept of what we were looking at. So there was all these machines like this one here, which I assume was uh, making all the other machinery work. We had no context to what it was doing. So I would suggest you take a guided tour if you can. You get to see some of the logistical part of the Carlsberg Brewery as well. So this is the part where they're making barrels. There's another part here where they've got the trucks that they used to use. And they have a load of horses too that used to drag carts around. Quite a big fan of the horsey section actually. He's having a drink of water there. But... Hello. Who's this one, Dave? You he. <laughs> Extra gem. <laughs> look at him. He's a big fella. Oh, it's actually a boy, look. You can see his... Um... <laughs> yeah. He's <laughs> got a lot of hair in his eyes. Do you think that's on trend? I think it's... Um bit of an 80s look back. So at the end of the tour we stopped in this little courtyard area to have a beer and uh, just sort of relax and talk about what we'd, uh, we'd seen and where we were going next which we headed back into the city 
and we went to this large warehouse sized food market. This is a terrible photo admittedly, I was trying to do a panorama. So instead you can see this close up of a sparkly cow. Uh, but it was great food in there, just loads of weird little market stalls. With all that food and beer, we thought the best activity to end the holiday would be to give our walking legs a break and try out our seafaring ones. How are you getting on, Dave? It's like the worst boat trip ever. So we're on a boat uh, in Copenhagen. It's this electric boat. And it doesn't go very fast, sorry Dave. It's difficult to drive, isn't it Dave? It's pretty difficult to drive. Yeah. We just chickened out from going round the, the proper route from this map. Well, mainly because it's a, there's big boats, big boats over there. So it looks, it looks pretty grim. But it looks nice over there. I don't really know. So all in all, I think I had a fantastic trip. And I think the measure of any holiday that I take, if, if I decide that it's somewhere I could go again, something I could explore again, then I think it's been a success. Uh, I was very happy to have been to Denmark. The people are amazing. I would definitely recommend going. Although, I have to admit, don't try and learn Danish because no one will let you speak it. They will all speak perfect English for you.